I just see for ages. Well, good evening. I'm talking with Juan Martinez. I call him Mr. Bikes. <laughs> I'm sure he's probably been called by any number of names, but Juan, I'm happy to have you. It's I've heard really so much here. about you <clears throat> and the famous electric bike. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about how you got started on this venture? Um, when I was a kid, I worked for a metal worker, a Colombian metal worker who took me under his wing and he taught me how to weld and how to um, use a torch. And ever since then, you know, I was 14 and I got really into metal work. And I hated, and I, and I was always an artist, but I hated galleries, so I wanted to figure out a way to have my stuff out on the street. So I would take my bicycles, I was like always a big bicycle person, like my dad raised me on a bike. You know, we would always, I lived like a, a couple of blocks from City Park, we were always on bikes. Um, and so I would, I would take my bikes and turn them into, um, you know, like saber tooth tiger skeletons, or like I had a one that looked like an Archaeopteryx, like the, uh, <laughs> I had another one that was six feet tall and it was an ostrich. Um, and, you know, I would ride over these contraptions around town and people would be like, wow. And, and that's what I wanted, you know, my sculptures to do is just to kind of like, kind of like really shake people's day up and be like, you know, it's something outside of the reality, you know, to really like make them question things or something, you know. and. So in that, I got, um, over time I learned more and more about bikes and, and more and more about metalwork. And I started to hone my, uh, my skills and efforts into the most efficient possible transportation that I could imagine. So I learned how to make these cargo bikes from a friend of mine in Austin, Bike Jeremy. And, um, and together, you know, he and I like redesigned it in many different ways and made it more and more efficient. And also made it more efficient to produce it, you know. And I've always been in, in my, and I've been working on this bike for about ten years, and I've always tried to um, make it as 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 easy as possible to reproduce, you know, like make it easy to build, right? Okay. Part of the, I want to integrate that into the design, and then, um, and it's a cargo bike, so the the front can carry, you know, one fifty to two hundred pounds, about, um, and. It's, it's long in the front. You'll have to see a picture of it. It's kind of hard to describe in words. But it's got a suitcase underneath it that has a, a battery in it that's a 48 volt lithium polymer battery. It's sort of like what you have in your computer, but it's like, it's like this big around. It's okay. Like, you know, it's about half the suitcase and then the rest of the electronics in there. So lithium battery. Batteries are the, you know, the worst part of, of any sort of like, like sustainable technology, right? Like, for panels or windmills, you always have to be charging a battery and draining a battery. Yes. So that's what we have to figure out how to do. Um, I've thought of ways, like, one idea was to have a tower and make, like, uh, something ironically with, with old car batteries, like pallets of old car batteries, the heaviest thing you could imagine, and having weights like a giant grandfather clock that as you make power, you're running these motors that, that very, very gradually are lifting these super heavy weights. Okay. And then as you let the weights go, there's some kind of generator that lets it out very slowly but produces a lot of power. Um, so that's one, just one idea. Um, but we have to figure out a way, and that's more of a centralized way to store power, but how to actually like make a portable way to store power, which right now is batteries. And is that what has brought you to Detroit? I mean, are you thinking, were you thinking in your mind that I need to be where... They do all of this stuff to Part help take me to the next one. Not only I have to be where they do all this stuff, where they've done all this stuff, but this is where this stuff, the first highway was here, the first car rolled out of the, rolled out of the um, assembly line here. Like the car, car culture, the suburbs, the expressways, everything was born here. My ultimate dream is to set up a factory in the same exact building as where the first Model T rolled out. Wow. And figure out some way to make, you know, and, and, and produce like these electric bicycles. Um, I think that Detroit, you know, there's so many elders here that are holding knowledge about manufacturing and there's so many youth here who are looking for opportunities that I'm imagining an intergenerational space where, um, maybe, you know, a place like Focus Hope where there's people there who, you know, teach, you know, machining and engineering and all this stuff and a connection with, you know, community youth that are, that are there, you know, f for those kinds of opportunities, right? 
Well, we definitely thank you for being here, and if you don't mind, mm -hmm. Happy Frog is going to keep his eye on you. Okay. I, okay. I, love, I love that. Solidarity with Happy Frog. Right on. Thank you so much, Juan. All right. I'll see you all on the road. Absolutely, you will. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.